I was pretty friendly with your dad, the the, the great James Cow. He he, you know, Jake, his son Jake, and my daughter Josie uh, were in the same class, and so we became good buddies. And he came to my birthday party, gave me some funny hats that were, you know, we. Um, I really I really loved him, and I I wonder, did you and your dad get a good you know, moment before he went, did you leave with good closure if you needed it or anything like that? We've always been close and, that, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but um, there was nothing that needed to be said that wasn't said. Uh, That's a know, Lucky for that. And uh, as you said, man, he's one of the greatest human beings of all time. Forget actors, which he was one of the best at that too, but he's uh, just a, you know, if you knew him, you knew that you'll never meet anyone like him ever again. So he was a real man, special dude, a, man. Yeah. Is there a, a personal or a professional piece of advice that you lean on or remember or sort of carry with you? Uh, keep your head down when you're fielding a ground ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it was always it was always sports with him. You know, it's you know, my, my keep McGregor, your head my, down when you're fielding a ground ball. Yeah, you know, um, my my favorite my favorite lesson my father ever taught me was he said, um, if somebody does is he told me this when I was four every day you know from my, my life starting when I was three or four years old he said if someone does something to you that you don't like you ask them once not to do it and if they do it again then you can hit them. <laughs> yeah, that's that was his advice. Anyway, I, I get, I'm very fascinated with this is a show that. I strikes to the heart of everybody. I need, given the world right now, for these missing persons in each episode to be found at least 90% of the time. What can you tell me? I can tell you the good news is, is we never miss. You All right. Never. Never miss, except when we're dealing with our own our own child. So that's the, the fun part of this show. It's a little different than a regular procedural. There's a serialized element where we are trying to figure out where our son is, and we don't really find that out. Uh, we find it out, and then we get uh, misled to a different uh, different path. There's evidence that leads us to believe that our son that comes back actually isn't our son. So uh, that's sort of the the, the fun of the show is that uh, we'll 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 solve our case to week to week cases, but the uh, our our personal case drags out throughout the whole se se uh, season. And your son was taken six years before. What are the statistics? in a missing person's case. I mean, when you get to six years, the percentage of finding this person has so got to be very low. At seven years, that's when the basically they're declared, you know, no longer worth looking for. I mean, that's after seven years, it's kind of the case is over. So we're like almost to that point when, when he shows back up. But again, we don't know if he's actually our son and there's things that lead us to believe that he's not our son. But, you know, as parents, as you know, like the hope you want to believe that it's him and so we, you know, bring them into our home and, you know, anyway. And as you solve cases for other people, obviously the thread of finding your own son six years gone goes through. At the end, is there a resolution in season one? That I can't tell you. That would be a spoiler. Because it would certainly impact season two, I would think. I mean, I don't, I mean. Yeah, well, I can say that there, there is resolution. I don't know if it's good or bad. I can't say if it's good or bad, but we do figure something out. The show looks fantastic. It's good to have you back on television. Will you do, on the movie front, Ocean's 14? I mean, if, if they're making it, I'm in, but I don't think that that's going to happen.